it is time for Money Tuesday, and we've all heard of Bitcoin, but it can be a little difficult to wrap our brains around digital currency. Marshall Clay with the Welch Group joins us now to sort of break it down and sort of give us a history of lesson of where this all came from. Marshall, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? Doing great. Good to see you. Uh, first of all, as we mentioned, it is hard for people to sort of wrap their minds around this digital currency. So how can you explain it in so-called layman's terms? Yeah, so I'd say you know any debate or any conversation around Bitcoin, it, it has to go back to the definition of what of what money is. And I think we all kind of understand day to day. We go in and we we transact for goods and services with the fiat currency that we currently use. But really, I mean, money is just a unit of economic measurement. It's how we as humans assign value to the various things that we're purchasing. And so over the course of time, we've used a number of different methods. You know, way back in the old days, we used a barter system, or we would you know trade you know one cow for a horse or vice or vice versa. And then that evolved over the course of time where we started to use, you know, various precious metals. Most people uh, think of gold and silver. Um, and then and then ultimately we evolved into what we kind of know today as the fiat currency. That's the paper money that we use. And so throughout history, you know, the, 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 there have been certain principle, principles of money which people have sort of coalesced around. And, and it's really five main principles. And the, and the first one is just that money has to be durable. It has to be, it has to, you know, basically withstand under constant use. Um, it has to be portable. It has to be easily transferable over distance. Um, it has to be divisible. So it has to be able to be broken down into smaller units. Um, and then obviously it has to be recognizable against other counterfeit currency. And then probably last but not least is the scarcity component, right? It has to be scarce. We can't have an infinite amount of money because then it would essentially be worthless. And so, and so it's this scarcity tenant that really um, gave life to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was, um, it kind of came to light in 2009 post-financial crisis. And it wasn't necessarily the U.S. government, but it was governments all over the world. They began essentially printing money, printing this fiat currency out of thin air in order to get us out of that financial crisis. And and sound money advocates, you know, didn't like that. So they're looking for alternative ways in which to transact. And, and Bitcoin, which started off as just an alternative means to transact, has really evolved into something more of a store of value. And so, so it's really about an really an inflation debate. I, I tell people that's what Bitcoin is. It's, it's about inflation. It's how best to combat inflation. So do you recommend your clients investing in Bitcoin or using Bitcoin or do you sort of recommend they stick with traditional currency or does it just depend on their situation? So so I know we only have three minutes this morning. So next week I'm actually going to go into you know a little bit more detail about the pros and cons, the arguments for and against. But you know, our firm technically does not, does not recommend Bitcoin and, and you'll see what I mean next week. But again, it all goes back to how you want to combat inflation, right? You can combat it with owning Bitcoin, you can combat it with owning gold, you can combat it with owning really high quality companies that provide goods and services that people need. We prefer uh, to, to, to take the latter approach. Um, you know, we just believe that whatever currency you're going to transact in, ultimately, if you if you bet your money on really high quality goods and services, you know, if they pay you in dollars, great. If they pay you in Bitcoin, great. If they pay you in gold, great. But, you know, ultimately, you're going to need power. You're going to need food. You're going to need you know, diapers, toilet paper, all those things that really high quality companies provide, um, you know, those are going to stand the test of time. But I'll go in more detail next week about about the ins and outs of Bitcoin so your your, your, your viewers can make their, that assessment for themselves. That is a good segue and a good place to end as we look forward to next week. Marshall Clay from the Welch Group, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and your family. All right, well, still to come here on Good Day New Year's Eve, right around the corner. And for many, that means partying all night long. But the measures Airbnb is taking to make sure parties at their rental property